So we're learning, we should have the base of Migdash immediately. And therefore, Shlema Yechel Nassim ben Sara and Aaron David Alevi ben Menachad Lester. We're on Tafchaf Hamid Beis, right at the top. Omar Shmuel, Chafam Beis 20b, top line. Omar Shmuel, Yechel Nalat Kuni Lakula Gaila. Shmuel says, I can resolve all the issues for all the exile because I can make a calendar. I know the, how to calculate uh, the sun, you know, the, uh, the moon, the calculations. I can make a calendar. And then we, they, they won't have to worry about keeping two days or whatever. During the time of the compilation of the Gemara, was there, uh, I guess there weren't always now. So there was a universal yeah. calendar? Or? They were still using, were using um, witnesses. Wit uh, witnesses in the, yeah, that's what it seems. As Ula, remember on Friday? Ula came in and told them what was going on and then um, yeah, we, we spoke about uh, it being mutar to be a Mahal Shabbos or uh, yeah but Ula came from Israel and said that they've already that they did something different in Israel than what you're doing over here as we'll see today some more of that so I'm going Abba Avud Rav Shmoloi L'Shmuel Rav Shmoloi's father his name was Abba. He tells to Shmuel, Yodamar Hai Milsta the Tani Basay the Iber. Are you um, familiar with what it says in the Brisa that has the secrets of the of making leap years? Noilad Kaidam Khatsay say Noilad Acha Khatsay that there's a difference between if the Mailad uh, is before Khatsay or after Khatsay. Amalai. Shmuel says, No, I'm not familiar with that. The Mailad is the is the, um, the birth of the new moon, but it's the birth of the new moon. Uh, that means it, in reality there's a new moon, the, the, which means that the the sun and the moon and the earth are lined up. That would be the the birth of the new moon. It doesn't mean the, how, when we see it. Because the Gemara is going to say that we we see what happened. We see the new moon six hours later, possibly. Um, at the Nailat, yeah, at, at the Nailat, there's, you're, all you're seeing is, um, is dark because there's no, the, the light of the, um, of the sun that's reflecting off the moon is only hitting the side that you can't see. And then as it moves a little bit, then you're getting just the sliver because it moves to the side, you can see the reflection just of the sliver of the moon because of the angle. And as it moves, um, all the way around to the other side, which takes 29 and a half days, then you'll get um, the full moon. The whole cycle is, is 29 and a half days, but when it goes 15 days, then you'll see the full moon. So there's a difference between before Chatzes and after Chatzes. Shmuel says, no, I'm not familiar with that. Uh, uh, if you didn't know that, then you probably don't know other things also. Yeah, quite a statement. This is, this is Abba, the father of Reb Smalai. Uh, the one, only thing I know from Reb Smalai, I think I remember, I mean, he's quoted sometimes, but at the end of Marcus, there was a, um, a Gemara that Reb Smalai said that there's 613 mitzvahs in the Torah. One source for that. <laughs> yeah, so this is the father of Reb Smalai. I thought he was earlier, though. Okay. Kisalak Reb Zera. So, uh, so far, we know that there's this concept of, of the Moilad being before Chatzais or after Chatzais. It's referring to Chatzais by day, by the way, not by night. Um, but we don't know what it is. Shmuel doesn't know what it is. And, and um, it was just used as like to, to see what he knows. So, when Reb Zera went to Eretz Yisrael, remember he fasted. To forget his uh, his Talmud Bavli, or maybe not to forget when he went to Eretz Yisrael. So Shalach Lu, he sent back. She said two things. First of all, Laila V'yayim needs to be. There's two ways of reading this: Menachedash or Menachadash. Yeah, Menachadash is uh, is a good 
it just makes it easier that if you if you if the if the moon was seen by night from the old moon the from the old previous month then you're not going to be able to to say within the next 24 hours that you've seen the new moon but even though it really only takes 12 hours because you lose the old moon for six hours and then there's six hours after the mila to see the new moon but because it's going to be day it's going to be impossible to see to see the new moon because you don't see the moon by day normally anyway that's what he said basically if everyone saw the moon by night the old moon then we learned that there's a possibility of maybe convincing the Adim that they really saw something that they didn't really see and, and to um, intimidate them to be able, because you want to make the calendar a certain way so that Shabbos and Yom Kippur don't fall out one day after another. So, but you can't do this if you've already seen the old moon by night, because everyone's going to say that's impossible, that, they, that the new moon is, was seen that day. That's the first point. Second point is, Uh, and this that Abba, the father of Rab Smalai, taught or mentioned to Shmuel that that uh, there's a difference before Chatzais and after Chatzais. You calculate the birth of the moon. If it was seen before Chatzais, that means before noontime. Then you'll be able to see it before Shkia. See, the, the, the only time to, to really see the moon by day would be at, right by sunrise or sunset. The, otherwise, in the middle of the day, you can't really see the moon. So if, it was, if the moilad was before Chatzais, then it's possible to see the moon uh, right before Shkia. Because six hours later, you should be able to see it. But that's only if the moilad was before Chatzais. Because then, where's the setting of the moon in the in the in the west? Like the was at the, it was considered at eleven a.m. Right? right. So you say six hours. Right? But at six hours, it's, it's going to be five. Eleven a.m. The, the moon is in theory over there, right? Well, the moon it's parallel to the sun, right? That's why it's the moon, right? It's not parallel. It's straight out of the sun. Yeah, so but I don't know. No. Moon will be, oh. you know, like not all up under the other. So, okay, the moon, sunlight, me, so the moon will be around right here, around this, right? Because it's probably in the sphere, right? So at sun, at sunset, the moon will be a little behind the sun. Right, a little behind the sun. At sunset, the moon will be a little bit behind the sun, which will be perfect because when the sun sets or as the sun is setting, it gets a little darker, you'll be able to see the moon. Okay, but if, 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 if but if it's the opposite, if it's um, especially near some, if it's uh, if it wasn't uh, the milad before chatzais, then be a shleiner samach l'shkias chama. Then it's impossible to have seen it before shkias chama because it takes six hours to be able to see the new moon, and um, and you don't have the six hours before shkia. What is the difference? The difference is if witnesses come and say that they saw it, we tell them that they, they didn't see it. It's impossible. Yeah. The Basin knew when and where it appeared. Yeah. Yeah. We need witnesses also. That's part of how they were able to see. That's part of how they were able to know whether it was a They knew what time it was. I, I, I understand, but some people say you already know the fact that well, right. So that's just how it's Well, that's going to happen on our day, for example. That's going to happen on our calendar day. They rely on our calendar. They knew it many times. Let's see. It's a much like us, how that works. How much they could just rely on the calculations. Amar Abzeira, Amar of Nachman. Abzeira says the name of Rab Nachman. It's actually, it's not just 
six hours plus six hours. It's actually 24 hours that the moon is, uh, is concealed in between the old moon and the new moon and the birth of the new moon to be able to see it. Lidi Dan, where are those extra 12 hours? Shismi Atika. We have six from the old moon, where the old moon goes uh, hidden because the sliver of the moon is so small that you can't really see anything for those six hours. And and then you have 18 from the new moon. Now, really what it means is six of the new moon, which is impossible to see because the sliver is too small. Right. Plus you have, there's got to be a day somewhere in the middle where it's going to be, where you can't see the moon because it's day. So you have six from the old moon where it's the, the size of the moon is too small. Then you have six of the new moon. And then you have the day that you can't see it. Now, there'll be like one night, I think, where the moon is completely dark. Yeah, yeah, right. So Liddy Don, Liddy Don for us, I think it means in Bavel, that are on the east and Israel is on the west. So those six, those 18 hours or those extra 12 hours the day is going to be from the new moon that you won't be able to see. The moon rises in the east and you can't see it, the moon, because the, the moonrise is going to be a little bit earlier for the east. The sunrise is going to be earlier when you're on the east. The sunrise, because the sun rises in the east, it's going to be a few minutes later. I think it's uh, the difference between Bavel is, uh, is 36 minutes, they say. So it's going to be 36 minutes earlier, which means that you won't be able to see the new moon uh, mm -hmm, the, the entire day. Lididu, but for the, um, for Eretz Yisrael, Shis Micharita, the six hours are going to be from the new moon, the Tamni Atika, and the 18 hours, which means the day hours that are going to um, stop us from seeing it, that's going to be from the old moon because it's in the west, it's going to set, um, it's going to set earlier, so I won't be able to see The old moon. I won't be able to see the old moon for the entire day. I'll only be able to see it. So all day I can't see it. And then I have the six hours plus six hours of the six hours of the old moon and the new moon. Right. Yeah. Now, when we announce the Moilad, are we announcing the actual Moilad? Not the way it's the way it's visible in Israel. So, uh -huh. so, so therefore, if you're in Bubba or if you're in Miami, you will not see it the same way. Yeah. Uh -huh. See the, what's happening the, the the day, the day in our time differences is the turning of the yeah, the axis the of Miami the earth. The same time as the in Israel. But it, that shouldn't be much of a difference because the, the, the lining up of the sun, the moon, and the earth doesn't really matter to the, the turning of the earth. I mean, the earth is... It doesn't, but if Israel, the earth is here, initially, and the moon is here, and the sun is here, right? Okay. Well... Six hours later, or however long it takes for the Earth to orbit, so that America is now at this point. At right. that point, the Moon is orbiting the Earth, right? So it's not it's no longer aligned. Right. So it takes. It doesn't happen. Oh, at the same time. but the actual. Yeah, so I just. I, I, Miami, it's not the same time as the Earth. I think the the visibility of the Milad, but the actual Milad, I think, should be, should be said. Because the er the turning of the Earth, whether we can see it or not, whether we're facing the Moon or not, with day or night, that time, doesn't have to do with the. We, by the time we turn around, we're no longer alive. So no All right. Has to be aligned at that time. No, but we don't. We don't. We'll never get aligned because we're just turning. We will we'll get aligned. It's six hours of moon. Oh, oh I see what you're saying. Uh huh. Is, I see what you're saying. Okay.
Okay. Do you hear what I'm saying? Uh, so one part of a location somewhere on planet yeah. Earth, it will be aligned, and the other part at the same time won't. Yeah, it's probably all by about 11 minutes, of course. Well, okay. That's Bob built uh, Eric Sustro. Well, Something like that. We said the, we said 36 minutes. 36 minutes. By the way, in the art scroll, the in the the Koran, which I was looking at this morning, um, has this whole thing about the dateline. He's throwing in the dateline into all of this very complicated uh, calculations and things. Where is the dateline that the difference over here has to do with the day? Um, in the uh, the way that I'm explaining it here, that it has to do with the visibility of the moon by day. That's extra 12 hours. Um, that I understood from the art scroll, which where I was staying over Shabbos, <laughs> they had an art scroll. So there was uh, quite a few columns of uh, commentary on this. Okay. For more uh, information, see there. My nafkamina, what's the difference if it's um, 24 hours, the new moon or the old moon? Like we said before, that if witnesses come and say they saw the new moon, we tell them that it's impossible because of these calculations. Amar Mar, Master Torah Tarshili Shihei, Laila Viyoy Minachadash or Minachadash, depends on how you want to read it. The night and the day have to be um, from the new month, from the new moon. Because if you see the old moon, then it's not going to work. Uh, if you see the old moon at night, then it's not going to work. You're not going to be able to see the new moon by day. Where do we know this from? Rabbi Yechonon Amar Meyerev Aderev. This is um, by Yom Kippur. It says, from evening to evening you fast. Until the 21st day in the evening. It says, in the evening, that tells me that that's when the calculations of the days are going to, to end which is Pesach it's referring to. You see, yeah, what is the Gemara actually asking over here? I mean, that the day follows the night? That we know from other sources, no? By Yerevai Viker. My Binaya, what's the difference between these two verses? That the difference is how to study the verses. Which one is teaching us what? Rav says that there's actually a difference. According to Rish Lakish, according to Rish Lakish, that says that it's from Pesach, Rish Lakish says, good morning, he says that you're supposed to eat matzah for the seven days of Pesach, but there's really no obligation to eat matzah the seven days of Pesach. There's only an obligation to eat matzah the first night. And that obligation doesn't have to do with Pesach. That obligation has to do with the carbon Pesach, which was brought on the 14th. And on the 14th, that obligation to eat matzah with the carbon Pesach ends at Chatzos. So when does the Pasuk that tells me that until the 21st, eat matzah, you eat matzah, when does that begin? That begins from Chatzos. So it turns out that the, um, the difference between one moon and the next, the cutoff point is not the evening, the cutoff point is Chatzais, according to Rish Lakish. Yeah. Yeah, so according to Rish Lakish, if you see the old moon before Chatzais, maybe the new moon could already be um, the following day. Amar Rabzeira. When we have a doubt of which day is Yom Tif, so the way we do it is we celebrate Yom Tif on one day, and then because of the doubt, we celebrate the next day. So the Sveka is Lekamesha Dinan, we throw it on the following day. So for example, um, Rosh Hashanah is Aleph and Bey's Tishrei. And Pesach is the 15th and the 16th. Okay. Lameimra, this is to say, the Chamesa V'Shitzra Avdinan, Arbeis Alei Avdinan. We don't make, put the doubt backwards to say, well, maybe it's the 14th. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, what we're saying here is that I don't, I don't make it a day earlier, the doubt, I make it a day later. Now, what's the explanation for this? We'll see in a second. You see, here's what's happening. We're only assuming that there's one month that is either 29 days or 30 days. So we're establishing that the month was 29 days, which means the new month is starting on the 30th, and that becomes Aleph Tishrei. Let's say Aleph Tishrei. But we don't know because maybe El was 30 days. So maybe it's not really Aleph Tishrei. So we keep Aleph and base Tishrei as the holiday. The Gemara asks, but maybe of, you assume that of was 30 days. And that's why when you started Elul, it was starting on the 31st day. It was, uh, that was Aleph Elul. Maybe of was only 29 days. And really when you're keeping, when you're keeping Aleph Tishrei, really you have to keep um, the 29th day of, of Elul as well. Because what about the previous month? If the previous month was only 29 days, then there's a day back that you have to be in doubt of. Uh, but it alternates, no? For the so, most part. So the Gemara answers, Tre yarchi chaseri kalislu. If, the, if it wouldn't have alternated, then we would have known about it in the last 60 days. <laughs> Sometime we would have heard about, well, that wouldn't be the last 60 days, it would only be the last 30 days, but we would have heard about that there would be an issue there in the last 30 days. Okay. Okay. Why it's important to still announce the time over the news flow. You showed me some paper where that's determined when the 14th day is by which we can cross the line. Uh-huh. The experience is really Levi, Levi Eklal Abavo. We're on the top of Chaf Aleph. Levi um, was in Bavo. And Levi is a student of Rabbi Danasi. Levi Ben Sisi. Yeah, his son is probably um, Rabbi Shor Ben Levi. That's what we assume. But we don't know that for sure. Um, he was a great student of, of, uh, of Rabbi, and possibly the halacha would be like him, even over Rav and Shmuel. No, it's... He argues with Rav often. Rav Levi, we have that in a lot of places. Levi Eklal Bavel, Bechad Sar Betishrei. He's in Bavel, and it's, the, and it's the 11th day of Tishrei. You know what that is, right? It's the day after Yom Kippur. Omar, he says, Basim tavshila de bavloi b'yemei rabba de marava. Oh, the food here is tasty on Yom Kippur. On Yom Kippur in Eretz Yisrael. Which basically was saying that you got your calendar wrong and you're eating on Yom Kippur. Amri lei asid. They said, testify. You're coming from Eretz Yisrael. You probably heard what they said. Testify in front of us and we'll change our calculations. What we're seeing from this Gemara is that Bavel had its own Besden. And, and um, they were keeping their own calculation. And Eretz Yisrael had its calculation. So Levi shows up and tells them what they're doing in Eretz Yisrael. He said, testify what you heard in Eretz Yisrael and we'll adjust what we heard. I didn't hear it directly. I, I was just assuming that that's what happened because I didn't, when I left, um, it looked like that's what was going to happen that they were going to make it a leap, that L was going to be a leap month. But we learned before that usually L is not a, a leap month. It's not a 30-day month. Remember we said, from the days of Ezra, we never made L 30 days. But apparently over here they did. He just didn't hear it clearly. So because he didn't hear it clearly, he can't testify. Machr is Rabbi Yechanan. 
Rabbi Yechanan announced, Kol hecha de matr shluchi nisam ole matr shluchi tishrei, la'abdu trei yoyimei, gzer nisam ati tishrei. It's possible that the messengers can go from Eretz Yisrael in Nisan and reach before it reached a certain area before Pesach, but in Tishrei they can't reach that area. It doesn't have to do with the rain; it has to do with the fact that in, Tish, in Tishrei you have two days Rosh Hashanah, so they can't leave. Well, maybe it's one day, maybe it's two days. I don't know what they did back then. You can't leave until Beis or Gimel. And then you can't travel on Shabbos and you can't travel on Yom Kippur. But on in Pesach, there's just the Shabbos that you can't travel. So it could be that the, that the uh, messengers could reach a certain area for Pesach, but they couldn't reach it for Tishrei. So Rabbi Yechanan says, if this is the type of area that if this is this location where they can't reach at Tishrei, even if they could reach a Pesach, so on Pesach, they also have to keep two days. It's a gzera. If Tishrei is two days the holidays, then Pesach has to be two days the holidays. They, they want it to be um, uh, symmetrical. Yeah. If in Tishrei they have to keep the holidays, it's fake of the Yoyma because the messengers can't reach there, then in Pesach they have to do the same. Rab Evu Bar Nagri, Rab Chia Bar Abba. Chia Bar Abba, Chia Bar Abba, student of, of, um, of Rabbi Yechanan. He's a student of Rabbi Yechanan, a major student of Rabbi Yechanan. Iklo Lahu Asra. He should be like in, in big letters under Rabbi Yechanan or something. Do you have that? Rab Chia Bar Abba. In the in the in the one that's divided in half because of it's uh, is he there? Here, Barab is a major student of Rabbi Yechna. So Iklola who asked you, "Davi matish luchanisim v'le matish luchitishe." He comes to this place where the messengers of Nisan during the month of Nisan can reach, but the messengers in Tishrei cannot reach. The problem is they only kept one day. That's in violation of Rabbi Yechanan's rule. He didn't tell him anything. This is, they didn't tell him anything. This is Evu Bar Nagri and Rabbi Chia Bar Abba. Shama Rabbi Yechanan V'Yikbid. Rabbi Yechanan hears about this and he becomes upset. Amr Lahu, he says to them, Lavami Lahu, did I not say to you? Hechad Matir Shlucha Nisan, Lamatir Shlucha Tishrei, Lav the Treyayim, Gazer Nisan, Atat Tishrei. I told you that you, this, they're not allowed to do this. You should have protested. I tell them that they're not keeping it right. Yeah, my daughter's in Eretz Yisrael. She calls me before, um, before Sukkot. The seminary that she's in is keeping one day. But her friend that's in another seminary called a rabbi, and her rabbi said they're keeping two days. What should I do? <laughs> yeah. So there's a clear machlaikas. So I don't have to get involved. It's just it's what like the seminary is doing, you know. Back and forth all the time. Yeah. People in Eretz Yisrael know this has to do with if you're from Chutzlaritz, but you're in Eretz Yisrael, you know, what, how does it work? But um, um, people know in Israel which rabbi to ask, depending on what they want to do, who's having a better challenge. Same with the other way around. Uh, there's an Israeli that lives here. Right. Sometimes they do right. not how long. Sometimes if they live here, they have some other rabbi to ask. So basically, I'm what you want. Uh-huh. Even within Chabad, it's a machloket? Even within Chabad, it's a machloket. Because the Alter Rebbe writes one thing in the Shulchan Aruch, in the beginning of the Shulchan Aruch, the Madur Abbasar, I think. He writes that it depends on the location. And then in other sources in Chabad, it says that it um, depends where you're coming from, where, where, you're, uh, where your home is or whatever. There was a thought to the story. But if you don't keep the second day, Right. So, right. Right. Rava 
have a ragil davayasu betanisa tre yaimi. Rava would would fast two days. Zimna Chadesh Takach Kavase. One time it actually worked out that he was right. It was it was good that he fasted two days because Yom Kippur was actually off a day, and they only found that out afterwards. I translated this as Yom Kippur. There are commentaries that translate it as Tisha B'av. Yeah, because it doesn't say which fast it is over here. Ram Gamliel Yosef Betanisa Kuli Yemid Kippurim. Ram Gamliel was. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, by me, it looks like a gimel. It's impossible. It can't be Rav Gamliel. It's a nun, actually. It must be Rav Nachman. Yeah. Rav Nachman. Yeah, I have an old Gemara that the um, the nun and the. Uh, you have a pencil here. Is that a? Let me just put a dot over there. Is it misprint? No, it looked like a gimel. In my Gemara. Uh, so Rav Nachman Yaseh B'Tanisa Kuli Yemid Kippurim. Rav Nachman is sitting and uh, fasting the whole Yom Kippur. Laorta, it comes that evening. Asahu Gavra. Someone comes. Amalei Lamacha Yemir Rabbe Marava. He says tomorrow is going to be uh, is is Yom Kippur in Eretz Yisrael. Now, Rabbi Rabbi Nachman didn't get a chance to break his fast on the wrong day. It's already Yom Kippur in Eretz Yisrael now. So, Amalei Mehecha, where are you from? Amalei mid, mid Damharia. I come from Damharia. Amalei Dam Tiei Yachrisei. Ay, blood is going to be at the end. Now, not, he's not, it sounds like he's cursing the person that showed up, but apparently the commentaries say that he's actually talking about himself, that how am I going to survive two days of fasting? He then says um, that our pursuers come quick. Kalim, they're swift. Uh, in other words, before I had a chance to eat, I'm already uh, fasting again. Yeah, we don't fast two days in Kippur. He fasted. He, we, we don't make a sveik of the aim of Yom Kippur. We have an assumption that, um, that the correct day is the day that we're keeping. But in the other holidays, we didn't make that assumption. We keep an extra day. Yeah. He ends up finding out that he kept the wrong day, so he has to fast the, the correct day. You know, in... Um, now, <laughs> quickly. Yeah, no. I guess it was too late. Uh, when... when um, sure. Yeah, back to back, because it was one day off. His calculation was one day off. His, oh, I don't know if it's us, sir, but we, the way that it was established is that we don't, we didn't set up a second day Sveik of the Aim of Yom Kippur. Yeah. Yeah. In, um, when they went to Japan during the war, so yeah, there, they had a lot of shyness about uh, the date line. Yeah. One of the shyness was which day it is regarding Yom Kippur. Fasting two days. Hawaii could also be a shyla. Yeah. Yeah, there was a chasanish. Uh, yeah. It has to do with. Um, if you establish the date line based on the land mass from Eretz Yisrael, as far as it extends from Eretz Yisrael, and then whatever is like removed from that ends up being uh, off the day, uh, a different day. Or if you establish, I'm sorry. Oh, it sounds like it would be better not to tell people. Right, right. 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 Maybe that's what he was telling him. Yeah. Shalach le Ravuna Baravan le Rava. Ravuna Baravan sends to Rava. Kadchazes to Mashkat Tkufas Tevis at Shitzar Benisan. When you see that the winter season, Tkufas Tevis, is extending until the 16th of Sivan, when is the end of the winter in the, in the, in the calendar? Where does it go from? The winter's from uh, December, from 
March 20, 22nd. Is that March? March 21? March 22. So if uh, March 22 or 21 or whatever is on the 16th of Nisan, then Abelu Hushaita, then you should make a leap year. Don't be concerned. You have to guard the spring, the season. You have to make sure that the spring is in the month of Nisan. And you're one day past. Now, that Nisan is in the spring. Yeah, we can't adjust the spring, but we can adjust Nisan. Um, uh, if it would have been one day earlier, then what they could have done is just made a leap month of, of Adar. And then Pesach would have fallen in the in the in the spring, but because it's two days, so it's already the sixteenth, not the fifteenth. So then it's too late. Then they have to add a whole extra month. What he's telling them is, don't be concerned that that sometimes there's other reasons why you make a leap year it has to do with when the sheep are young or or too young um, for the carbon Pesach or whatever. Uh, he says, don't be concerned about that. This, is, this itself is enough of a reason. Amlu Rav Nachman, Hanu Nechusi Yama. Rav Nachman tells the people, the, the sea, um, sea people, people that travel by boat, Atun, Tleyadisu Bekviyasa Diyarcha, you're not going to know when Rosh Chodesh is, so Ki Chazisu Sara, Demashlam Liyayma Biru Chamira. When you see the moon rise and moon set, at exactly the time of sunrise and sunset. So then you should burn your hummus. That's going to be exactly in the middle of the month. When the moon, moon rise and moon set is exactly the Maslam Liyoyma. No, I'm sorry. The moon rise and moon set is exactly at sunset to sunrise. In other words, you get the full night and in the morning it's, but that would be the, also the middle of the month. No, the middle of the month is exactly the full moon. Oh, the sun. Now I'm not talking about the, I'm not talking about a full moon or not. It turns out we are talking about the full moon, but that's not the significance. Over here we're talking about when the moon is in the sky. No, so the sun sets and the moon rises. As, right, as the sun sets, the moon rises. So that would mean that it's the um, that it's the middle of the month. But that would be the fifteenth. But we need it to be the fourteenth. Over there, it's already going to be on the fourteenth because they're on the sea. They don't have anything blocking them. They'll be able to see it clearer. And already at the fourteenth, they'll already be able to see the moon rising. As the sun setting. Forty-four minutes. Okay. Yeah, we're talking about Erev Pesach. So this is not That's probably over dry land. It's forty-four minutes over the sea. You can Pesach see it. On the 15th? <laughs> Pesach is the fourteenth by night, the fifteenth. Yeah, but you have to burn the chametz earlier. Yeah, so, yeah. Right. 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 Forty-nine. Forty-nine. Right. When's the uh -huh. equinox? Because the day before, there is the next day. Uh huh. Okay. Usually be in the fall or the spring. No, it's a solstice. I'm, I'm sorry, solstice is yeah. when you have the longest day here for the shoes. Right. That would be in. That's Tishrei and Nisan is the equinox, where you have equal twelve hours by by nine, twelve hours by day. Yeah. December and March is the opposite. You have the longest and the no, shortest. The longest day of the year is the shortest day, not March. 
actually, that's why uh, the, the Christians December still use June. the... Uh, uh, December and June. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Marches would be Nisan. Right. That's why right. uh, Christians would use the lunar calendar to find when they celebrate Easter. That's when they celebrate Pesach. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Rabbi, is Rav Nachman telling them to burn the chametz during the day or, or the, the night of the fourth? It sounds like... I, I think it's by day. Right, so... That's so in other words, as the moon sets, mm -hmm. the following day, they should burn the chametz, which is the 14th in the morning. Right, it's kind of like a big deal, but... Really, they no. should be burned night right the 14th at night no uh, they burn it or... 14th in the morning they search for it that night they oh, burn oh, it in sorry. the morning oh yeah, yeah. okay search yeah. For... how do they know when to search for it it seems pretty common to understand how they did comparison some guy around here but they if you burn it three hours you know <laughs> they did I have nothing suggesting that they did Kaparis every night, just in case, <laughs> for the first... Uh... <laughs> I'm not suggesting they didn't do Kaparis at all. Okay. You know, the, um, the visibility of the, of the sun or the moon is not 100% that what I see is what, because the light is bending, that's called the refract refraction. And so sunrise and sunset is not a hundred percent sunrise. It's possible that I could be seeing it even after it's even after it's set or before it rises because the, the way the north and north, yeah. because the way that the light um, goes over. <laughs> okay. We're holding the Mishnah on top of on top of Khafalaf. I'm at base. New Mishnah. Al shnei chadashim mechal in Esther Shabbos. It's two months a year that in mechal Shabbos, um, the witnesses are mechal Shabbos. You see, we're getting confused over here because there's messengers that go out to tell everyone, and then there's messengers or witnesses that come in to tell the bezdin. Now we're talking about the 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 witnesses that come to the bezdin. They're mechal Shabbos twice a year to make sure that the bezdin hears right away that the new moon was seen. On least in Val Tishrei. Shebohen, no, it, it seems like we're making something dependent on something that's dependent on it. Because on these, shluchim yaitzim l'surya, we send the opposite, we send messengers out to Surya for those two months. Really, we send for more months, we send for six months, right? But for these two months, we, we send out. And with these, we establish the holidays uh, if the issue was what which carbon to bring, then we had to be Mahal Shabbos every single month for the Shluchim, for the uh, Adim to show up in Bezdin to tell us which carbon to bring. Yeah. Yeah, we mentioned this before. The Gemara right away asks, Al base Khadashim Basulai, you only have two months where you send out. But we said in six months we send out. We said because of Adar and because of Iyar, if it was the base of Mikdash and etc. And all of them, the witnesses can go out already in the evening. But on Nisan and Tishrei, they have to wait for the morning until the Bezdin can say Makudash. Because if the moon was seen at night, the Bezdin has to wait. It's going to be later on in the Sechta that they don't actually pronounce Makudash, Makudash, that, the, that, the, that the month has been sanctified, the new, the new month. They have to wait on Nisan and Tishrei, they have to wait for the morning to hear it from the Bezdin before they go out. The other month, it's just a, um, a notification, and they can assume that the Bezdin is going to do that because the moon was already seen by night. Yeah. Why exactly they have to wait? It's not so clear why they have to wait. <coughs> right. Right. 
in one of the spirit witnesses to come with me, they should really do all that he has asked for Paul. I want cinnamon buns. I don't want to say. Okay. Taisvis over here says that what Rashi says that Minatayra Yemchalal for every month. But the rabbi said not to. Yeah. And Taste was asked, one second, Elamaya de Hashem. And uh, the Gemara says that Yimachal Shabbos. That Yimachal Shabbos for, um, it seems to be a Deraisa for, for a regular Rashkadesh. Because the question is, um, is, is it, did the rabbis tell you not to? But really, biblically, you're supposed to be Mahal Shamas, or the rabbi is telling you that you have to, and even though biblically, you don't, you're, you're not Mahal Shamas. Yeah. Tanya Namihachi was also taught in Nebraisa. Al Kulan Yaitimi Be'erev. They would always travel by night. The messengers would go out. Al Nisim Al Tishrei, Al Shishma Mpi Bezdin, Makudish. But Al Nisim Tishrei, they have to hear the pronouncement from the Bezdin. Tana Rabbanon was taught in the Bryson Menayin from Mechal Lameser Shabbos. How do you know that Mechal Shabbos for the witnesses to come? It says, Talmud Laimar, Eilam Mayadei Hashem Asher Tikraisim B'mayadam. These are the holidays of Hashem that are called in their time. Yochel Kshem Shemachal, that means that you have to show up even if it's on Shabbos. Yochel Kshem Shemachal Amad Shiyaskachu, Kach Mechal Amad Shal Shiyaskaimu. The same way that the witnesses show up to make it Rosh Chaydash. The witnesses should also go out to pronounce to everyone, to let everyone know, even on Shabbos, that Rosh Chodesh was pronounced. Maybe a Mechal Shabbos for the messengers to go out. Only to create the Rosh Chodesh, to pronounce it as Rosh Chodesh, you Mechal Shabbos, but you're not Mechal Shabbos to let everyone know that it was Rosh Chodesh. The Basin Migdash was around, and every Rosh Chaydash there would be Machal Shabbos for the witnesses to come. The witnesses would be Machal Shabbos because they had to know which carbon to bring. Originally, they were Machal Shabbos to be able to travel to the, to the court. After the Basin Migdash was destroyed, Rabbi Yechem and Zakai said, What are you going? Is there a sacrifice that we need to know this information? By the doctors, they always say, why are you doing this test? Well, it's good to know. <laughs> so and that's what they were saying. They had that by Rabbi Yechem and Zakai. They were, they were saying, why, why are you being Mechal Shabbos? Said, well, it's good to know. He said, but what are you going to do with the information? You, you can't, there's no karbanas. Right, right. <laughs> So the institute, there's an insurance thing in there, that's the insurance factor. But um, they, they instituted that only for Nissan and Tishri because over there it's relevant for the holidays. Over there, that information is actually going to make a difference. Which day is the holidays? See, Mechal Shabbos then. Now we have a new mission, the Bein Shenir Ba'alil, Bein Shalainir Ba'alil. Whether the moon was seen clearly or whether it wasn't seen clearly, Mechal and Lelavis Shabbos. Your Mechal Shabbos, to be able to come to the Bezdin, to be able to announce it. Now, the Chiddush over here is, is that as you're looking at the moon, so oh, this is so obvious, I'm sure everyone else is seeing it. We're saying, no, you can't make that assumption. You have to go if you saw it. Rabbi Yaisi Aymer. Right. Rabbi Yaisi Aymer, near Ba'alil, ain't Mechal and Shabbos. Rabbi Yaisi says, no, if it was so clear, you don't have to be Mechal Shabbos. So you, someone else saw it. Someone that doesn't have to be Mechal Shabbos to get to the Bezdin. Maisha Sha'avru Yesim Arbam Zug is a story that there were more than 40 peers. The Ikvam Rabbi Kiva Balud, Balud, Rabbi Kiva stopped them in Lud. They were on their way to, I guess, Yerushalayim. Kiva said, No, you're not going. You're staying over here. He took away the car keys. Shalach Lai Ram Gamliel, Ram Gamliel said, If you're going to stop them, then next month they're not going to be able, they're not going to go. They're going to say, oh, I tried once and they, they didn't let me and whatever. 
Yeah. Because they went as peers. I'm not sure. They had to see together. Did the witnesses have to see each other? Yeah, they like, were like, saying, right, they were saying there was no pair there. Oh, they did all these witnesses, but no, none of them were pairs. Right. No, when it comes to uh, like a murder or something like that, the witnesses have to see each other and they have to, yeah. when it comes to seeing the new moon, do the witnesses have to see each other, all those laws? And that's it, can one person say, I saw it up there? You're saying this for the first time. Do they do, they have to be a pair or they don't have to? If there was only one pair who would not have done so. If there's only one pair, I'm asking if there was one, if there were two individuals that were on their way. I mean, in, in the laws of Adis, the, the witnesses are supposed to be there as a pair. I'm just, I'm not sure how it works over here. Okay, my mashma, how do you know the high alil lashen the miglahu? That that means that it was seen, obviously, it was open, but we're translating a word of the Mishnah now. Tell him the words of Hashem, the the are pure, like um, refined silver, clear on the earth, refined seven times. That's how they would refine the uh, the silver seven times refined. Wow. Okay, so we're seeing that when it's clear on the earth, it means everyone can tell that it's refined. Um, we see that the word alil means um, clear. Alil sounds like the uh, genes. <laughs> okay. Uh, Ravi Shmuel. There's two, um, two opinions over here regarding a difference between Maisha Rabbein, um, Maisha and um, and Shlaima Melech. Talking about that the words of Hashem are pure. So we say now, There were 50 gates of understanding. They were all given to Moshe, except for one. He's a little bit short of God. A little bit short. That means he had uh, 49 gates. Some learn that mat, if you don't pronounce the ayin, which is easy to, to skip unless you're Yemenite, is 49. 40. So it's 50 gates and 49 are, um, are that's what Moshe Rabbeinu had. Bikish Kehelis Limtse Divri Chefetz. Kehelis tried to, to find the words of desire. Bikish Kehelis Lies Kamesha. He wanted to be like Moshe, Yatsabaska Varmalai, because of Yesha Divrayemes. This is the words of the upright are, are true. Like Kamnavi Yedbi Israel, there was no uh, no prophet in Israel, Kamesha, like Moshe. So you're not going to be able to be like Moshe. The Khadamar, the other one says, Binavim like Kam, the Malachim Kam, that in prophecy he wasn't, but in as a king, yes. So what do we mean that he was trying to, to find the words of desire? He wanted to make judgment without witnesses. Just because of his, um, I guess, intuition. The Torah says, it says clearly in the Torah that you need to uh, you need two witnesses. You can't judge like that. How did he judge with the uh, with the woman that, uh, that cut the baby in half? But no witnesses. Huh? He suggested it. Yeah. Yeah. But he did make a verdict over there. I think the commentaries over there say that there had to have been witnesses also, and something, and uh, witnesses came later, and he was able to see before. Right. Well, the Melech can have his own court, right? Where he can uh, like kill up, up to like a third of the people for for Shalom. Uh -huh. But that would only be things that are relevant for um for the kingdom. Doesn't sound like he can just take, you know, just between a conflict between two people. 
you know. Mm-hmm. What was that? The baby was the witness. <laughs> yeah. There's a very nice, in that story, there's a very nice Meiri that talks about if it was um, the relationship between the mother, between the two mothers, that it was a mother in law and a, and a mother in law and a, and a uh, daughter in law. And the question was if the child was going to be the brother of the deceased husband, if the daughter in law would have to wait for Yiba. Yeah. But, but don't you find sometimes that Bezdin will come in and basically kill a person? Like without witness, they'll, they'll put him in a room, feed them certain foods. Yeah, if the best in knows 100%, but they don't have the actual witnesses. Yeah. Yeah. What do you call Shlomo here? I mean, I know. Oh, that's in, in the book of Kahelis, he's called Kahelis. Divri Kahelis is called Kahelis. I'm sorry. Uh, of the, no, I think it's more like uh, Dear Diary or some, you know, like that. Maiser Shavar Yeser may our boyim zog vipen Rabbi Akiva Chula. There was a story that there were forty peers and Rabbi Akiva stopped them. Tanya, I'm Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda says Chas v'Shalom Rabbi Akiva can like God protect us that um, Rabbi Akiva would have stopped them. Elisha Zephyr Rosh Hashal Geder Ikman. It was this other fellow. His name was Zephyr. He was the head of the city of Geder. And Vishalach uh, Vishalach Ram Gamliel Varidim Gulasi Ram Gamliel deposed him from his position. Deposed what, all 40? No, the person that stopped the 40 from coming. It was a, right. it must have been like a mayor or something. I mean, I would think it would be unnecessary for 40 people. Um, yeah, but Ram Gamliel wanted them to come because let's say next month there's only one of these fellows that sees the moon. And it's important that he doesn't um, that he doesn't get uh, you know discouraged. You know, when these forty of them are going to come, they're going to say, "Oh, thank you so much for coming. It's so good you came." You know, so now the next month they should they would feed them. Okay, Avu b'nai shiras achedes yelchu. The father and son. Oh, here we're going to have what we were talking about. Father and son that saw the new moon. They should go. Leishem is star from Zemzeh. Not because they could combine with each other, because they're invalid as witnesses together. But they'll be able to join the others, you see? The witnesses over here did not have to come as peers. Reb Shimon says even more than that, that they're actually, they're actually kasha. Am Rabbi Yesi, Maisha B'tav Yarei Fishra Sachedes B'Yushalayim, any two witnesses, even if they're related. Usually r- relatives are an apostle. Reb Shimon is saying that's because of uh, other things, but here we're not going to consider it a bias of some sort. Maybe if they're related to the moon. Shiraz HaChedesh B'Yishalayim, this Tuv Yaha he sees the, the new moon in Yerushalayim, who b'nai v'avdei m'shukher, him, his son, and his slave that was m'shukher, v'kibla kayinim aysayi v'espenai, why does it say kayinim? It says, and the kayinim accepted him and his son, who pasal us avdei, but they said not the, not the slave. K'shabol ifnei bezdin, kibla aysayi v'esavdei, who pasal us benai, comes in front of bezdin, they accepted him and the servant, and they didn't accept the, uh, the son. What's the uh, what's the job of the kainim in this? It's a little bit unclear. Let's see. Amra Blavi, my time the Reb Shimon. What's the reason that Reb Shimon says that you can accept witnesses even though they're relatives? The Ksiv Vayem Rashem Al Meishivel Aron Beretz from Time Leimer Achidus Zalachem. Who does Hashem speak to? Meish and Aron, the brothers. Eidazu take Sheira Bachem. This testimony is kosher with you and your brother. For Rabbanon, what did the Rabbanon say? This is handed over to you, not that you could be the actual witnesses. Yeah. 
This is the story with Tavia Reifa, that he came with his son and his servant. Amrav Chanan Barava, Hilchas Akareb Shimon. Chanan Barava says, Allah has Akareb Shimon, that they are accepted, even if they're relatives. Amalei Rav Huna, Rav Chanan Barava, I think Rav Chanan Barava was a son in law of, of Rav. Rav Huna is a student of Rav. He tells Rav Chanan Bar- Barava, Rabbi Yaisi, you maise, this, we have a, a, a statement from Rabbi Yaisi. Rabbi Yaisi says that they did not accept the father and the son. But, um, and we also, have, we also have a story. We have an actual story. Now, the, when, whenever there's a machlekes Rabbi Yaisi and Rabbi Shimon, the Allah would be like Rabbi Yaisi. And we have a story. And whenever there's a story, the Allah is like the story. That's how they actually passed him. Now you're telling me, Many times I was in front of Rav and we studied this, and I said, and he never said anything. How did you teach it? I taught that Rab Shimon was the one that said the story, and Rabbi Yaisi was the one that said that we accept. Um, father and son witnesses. That's why I didn't say anything. He didn't care about the name. He only cared about what the halacha was. And because you taught it in the opposite opinions, that you uh, you attributed the names to the to the different opinions. That's why he didn't say anything. This is what uh, um, Rabbi Beryl Wine says that the Magid, uh, these Magidim would travel around. They would go and say stories and different things. So they had two suitcases. One had papers with all the stories and the other suitcase had a bunch of names so they would pull a story out and then they would pull the name out and then they would say whatever <laughs> match it up yeah Amar Tavi braid the Mari the Mari Tavi Amar Marukva Amar Shmuel Hilchas HaKarab Shimon there's another version over here Ain Hilchas HaKarab Shimon yeah, it's a big help. <laughs> Allah is like Rib Shimon, or Allah is not like Rib Shimon. Yeah, how do we have differences in halacha? This, what, this, uh, the, the, the Rambam paskins like this, the Rush paskins like that, the Rif paskins like this. Sometimes it has to do with the text of the Gemara, if they had a different text, if they had a different version of the Gemara. Then sometimes it has to do with the Gemaras that say how to paskin, if there's a machlaikis, the Rav Yaisi, and this. They had a different version of that Gemara. That changes the like the whole uh, the whole uh, rule, you know. If the rule different versions in the rule. Well, sometimes the Svardim will have a different psak than Ashkenazim, based on the Rambam, based on the the, the Mechaber, you know, which is all based on a different version of of what it had, what it said in the text in the Gemara. Okay, Eloi Napsulim. The following are puzzle for to testify. A masachik bekuvia. Kuvia is a cube. Dice. 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 Rummy, <laughs> rummy cube. A cube, like rummy cube. Cuck, right? That's cube. That's the this word. This cube. Cube. It's a cube. Cub. Okay. Um, a masachik bekuvia, someone that plays with dice. Malvi berib is someone that lends money on interest. Mafricha yainim. This is um like races, you know, type of gambling. The seichri shvi is people that sell shmita produce. Ba'avadim or servants, or slaves. If a woman can't testify, then these um, people also cannot testify. Depends on what type of uh, testimony there. Um, now, the Gemara says, but let's say a woman would be able to testify, which there are certain things that a woman can testify. For example, if a man died somewhere, to be able to come back and tell the Besdin that this woman, his wife, is free to remarry because there was uh, the husband passed away. So, 
then these people that are not normally trusted would yes be trusted. Amaravashi is a Simeras, Gazlan de Devreim Kshem Le Desisha. A Gazlan Midivreim. Gazlan Midivreim. Um, that means he's considered a Gazlan, not Midiraisa. Are these people considered um, uh, these these um, uh, gamblers are considered a gazlan, a robber only rabbinically? They're not really stealing; they're just um, rabbinically it's considered stealing. Why? Because the person never agreed to that. The only reason why he agreed to pay if that horse um, was because he thought that that horse was going to win, or whatever. So he never really agreed to it. He had his, his intention was, was to win. Yeah. Was to win. yeah. Right. Right. What is that? Oh, profit. Okay. Mishra Sachaydesh, Veina Yachal Lahalech. Someone that sees the new moon, but he's not able to, to go. They ride him on a, uh, on a donkey, even on Shabbos. Even on a bed, they would carry him, or on the donkey. Um, and you also take along uh, protection. If they're laying in, in uh, like ambush for them, like from the other marklays, then could, they could take along sticks to protect themselves. In my sederach rechayka, if it's long, like from the other mezainas, they take along um, food for the trip. Al mahalich laila v'yoy mechalin es a shabbos v'yitin leidasisha for a trip of that takes it a night and a day. The mechal shabbos um, and they go to testify. For the month, these are the holidays of Hashem that are called in that time, and which taught us before that you do this even on Shabbos. I don't know how much. Okay, let's leave it over here. Great job, great job. Wow.